Alright guys, so this is the second trip here to pick up John's 1967 Corvette. So I'm pretty excited for him. I'm sure he's really excited to pick this up today. We had to come back a second day just because um, trying to get the funds in order and um, getting some more parts and everything. So we pulled a bunch of parts down from the rafters. It included a um, instrument gauge cluster couple different glove box compartments which he didn't need one because one was hacked into right now for a radio so he has two of those um, another pair of 67 Corvette seats and um, a bunch of other little things too that are you know worth a decent amount of money so he's we're getting um, another part of the clip that um, the previous owner now had to above the Raptors in his garage so we have to pull that one down um, and then he's going to attempt to drive it back home. So it's only a couple miles away from his house uh, where the car is at right now. And uh, we're going to try to drive it back home. We bled the brakes already and uh, it's fired up pretty fast. So we're pretty confident that we can make it a couple mile trip down the road. I'm going to film that. Um, we'll try to film that on the way back. And then uh, we'll take a look at the car whenever we get it back to his house. So. Um, pretty good day out right now it's about 55 degrees and uh, pretty dry so it'll be a good trip to uh, take the car back home and, and start looking at it here so um, pretty excited and uh, I think it's a pretty cool episode so so just to go over some of the history of the car the this owner has had it since 1969 it's a 1967 Corvette so that's you know pretty impressive to keep a car that long so he purchased it off of a local police officer and has had it ever since he was a Vietnam War vet um, came back home from the war and bought this 67 Corvette so it's been in his family ever since then and um, John how he found out about this car was that his uncle was friends with this owner he drove it in um, the garage that we're pulling out of now pretty long time ago um, and then leading up to that point before this John's uncle it was always in storage so John's uncle took this car from storage straight to this garage where it sat for another we're, we're guessing about 10 to 15 years again um, in this garage that we're at now so the car has very low miles on it, it says 20 I think it's 27,000 miles on it I'll have to look at it again um, I don't think the gauge cluster has been removed from that I think it's the original one and it doesn't look like it's been turned over just how well um, the car has been kept so it's you know pretty cool that uh, John is now pretty much the third owner. Well, he is the third owner. That's a long time to have a car, and uh, it's probably gonna be kind of emotional for this guy to let it go. So we'll see what happens on here, and um, I'll try to film as much as I can, but I want to be respectful at the same time. So um, we'll catch you guys here in a couple more minutes. Whose Jeep's this? Whose Jeep's this? Oh man, I didn't even see this thing yet. <laughs> Jeez, oh man. What size are these wheels? 30. 30s? I love, I love I that body stuff. I can't, I couldn't, can't do the custom one. I got yeah. that feeling in this leg and it got that big teak wheel. Oh, uh, yeah. My leg would get caught up with Ah, uh, yeah. Who, um, was it one of your friends that painted it then? Or, because that paint held up really well. Russ Farmantino. He used to have a body shop down here on, uh, Fairview. Okay. Uh, that was painted back then. Uh, 
That's what John was saying. I can't believe that. That's crazy how well it held up. Doesn't look like it has even any spider cracking or anything in it. I think that's something in the tire. Yeah. Yeah. Still though. So that was back in the 70s they painted this then, right? Yeah. 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 All this fancy paint's not Right. They hold an air john or? Yeah. Yeah, they all got still got some oh, okay. air in them. Yeah. yeah, they all have air in them. Jeez. So a 67 Corvette was the final year of the C2 generation of the Corvettes. It was a pretty unique year. Um, originally it was intended to be the start of a C3 Corvette, but instead GM pushed that back and started to make um, the 68 as the first year of the C3 generation. So there's a couple of unique differences on a 67 Corvette. They have a couple of different hood options. All big block hoods look like this as you see right now with the exception of the L88 underneath actually had a functional air scoop underneath and it actually drew in colder air from the outside and pushed it back towards the windshield. So that was kind of cool and functional. This one doesn't have it. Um, it was just a normal big block hood. The small block hood would just be a standard hood from like a 66 Corvette it would be the same as uh, this year. But this engine was you know, not the original engine, unfortunately, but it is just a small block, so we're thinking maybe down the line somewhere it was changed over from a big block or the engine maybe was blew up. We don't know the exact story, but Rudy, the original owner, or the current owner um, before John, um, doesn't know the story of exactly what went wrong with the original engine or what it was. There is a rumor going around that some small block 327s made it through uh, production with a big block hood. Something to the... A uh, variation of a worker in late February, early March, apparently dropped some sort of tool into a uh, small block hood mold, and ultimately this would lead to a loss in production if they had to wait on a mold to be remade. So management decided to just keep on going with a big block hood for this time span, and ultimately led to about 600 vets that off the production line had a big block hood all of which did not have a center section stripe painted in. They were all solid hoods. So kind of a unique story there. And um, other notable differences would be first time that the Corvette didn't have knockoff wheels from C2. So this car does not have knockoff wheels. Well, here comes fuel. Yeah. It's pumping fuel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you want to get the oil circulating a little bit first before it fired right up. But yeah, the fuel's pulling already through it. Think it's sparking. Um, no, that that was just the, coming through the carb. You're good. Go ahead. Yep, we've closed the choke on it now, so. Is there any pressure at all building up or nothing? Maybe a tiny, tiny. Yeah. It goes over. It was, the bowl was empty all the way. Oh, uh, was it? Yeah, it's not leaking. 
I mean, it's not leaking, it leaks unless it's inside the wheel. I got sockets, we can crack the bleed. This cylinder, you know? Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, okay. it's um it's flooded now. It's yeah. Flooded. Yeah. There, try it now. <laughs> I think there's just something on the exhaust manifolds. That's probably why it's doing that. Then we had kids. I ended up with a '69 Ford XL. <laughs> <laughs> and there, from there, '72 Ford station wagon. <laughs> I know where you're coming from. <laughs> what are you gonna do? You know, gotta pay the bills. That's Can't have fun anymore. <laughs> uh, How oh, this one slipped through. Stay with you. Well, I really want to sell it to my sister. I ain't been using it. it just uh, yeah. She says when I die, she's going to call the. Uh, Someone to get rid of it quick or something, or. Oh, somebody, something big time. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, they don't want. Yeah, they don't need any more of those kind of cars for them. John will be a, a great owner to it. I'm jealous. Yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> signals work and brake lights Light. yeah lights brake lights work turn signals are working when you're using them Jeez. 
So that concluded day one, got the brakes all back, got them bled, and surprisingly they worked. They weren't even locked up when we pushed the car out. We took really good care of the car even though it sat, and these are all the parts we pulled from the rafters down that night. A ton of parts including new seats, a couple of different glove box doors, like I was saying, a whole new gauge cluster. He had a uh, 67 parts car that he had from the 70s for whatever reason, and a bunch of door cards and bumpers and all that stuff, so pretty good haul on the way back. Um, this concludes day one, and then we're going to go move into the current day, which is day two, and this is the pickup day. Both of them are screwed up, but this one's worse. I ain't got no feeling at all on this one. This one I got 50%. You got a purple heart? Oh, yeah. You got a purple heart? Yeah. I've been for paying for license plates 40 years. I could have gotten it for free with the purple heart. Really? Mm. What's the game plan here? You want to... Back that out to the front then, or? Yeah, I'm gonna. Rudy, I think I am gonna climb up there one time while I got Ryan to help me. I am gonna yeah. try to get there. Yeah, we could do that if you want to. After you I'll just pull out in the pull open. Pull it out and then we'll, we'll block go it up there. Then. Okay. All right, then another day, you know, if you ever want to get them muffins and shit down, you could help me start that Thunderbird and yeah. get it out. Yeah. It, it ain't been started in 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> I can help you with that. Like I said, I'll. <clears throat> we're not to dig through everything, but I'll get back and get that rear end. And I don't know if she finds the keys. I'd like to. Where is the shed? Behind the garage. This one here, maybe. Yeah. The other side. Is there a way to get a vehicle back there, maybe? You show them the fancy key? No, oh, yeah, check this one. Wow. <laughs> How cool is that? Jeez. Does this actually fit it and stuff, too? Or is that just a just random key that... It's for this car. It's for this car, wow. I've never seen anything like that Yeah, before. that's it. That's cool. I bet it's hung on the wall. Yeah. Does it? Okay. Nice. You do have brakes? Yeah. Oh, good. Let me shut the joke real quick. All right.
I'll drive. <laughs> it looked so good when I was driving. I was like, oh, it doesn't look like he's having any issue. Yeah. Other than that, though, I mean. Yeah, it's definitely some sort. I bet that fuel pump is probably. Let go again or something. I'll you, I have a fire extinguisher in my truck. I was thinking, oh crap, I should have had it. Yeah. Maybe right around where that connection is down there. It looks a little bit. It was worse before though, whenever we first started it. Pump cage ain't working. Yeah. yeah. Can you hear it back? No, it's it curving in a little yeah. bit. Not too bad though. Let me... oh, she's back here for you. It's uh, kind of always risky driving some home, but. I, yeah, I would have chanced it too. A lot of gear noise in the transmission. I'm a little worried about how much oil oh, is yeah. I mean, you can really hear it here to here. Uh, yeah. Well, it's a good uh, starting point. Tremec TKX, you know, five speed. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs>